So in this informational video session, we are going to cover GASB 96, which is subscription-based information technology agreements, which you will hear referred to as SBITAs. <clears throat> GASB 96, the good news about GASB 96 is that the accounting treatment for this is exactly the same as GASB 87. So you guys have done this rodeo before, you know how the payment schedules work, you know how to reconcile it back to your general ledger, you know how to make sure your principal uh, it should be recorded, you know how your interest should be recorded, you know how your executory cost should be recorded, you know how to set up your asset and to make sure it keeps in balance, and you should know how to do a closing package now that you've done a mid-year closing package for Kelly. So that's the good news. The bad news is this takes effect July 1st, 2022. So we have a very tight turnaround on this. So we are trying to get this out as quickly as possible and this information in your hands. Um, your agency is responsible. Your county department is responsible for understanding GASB 96, for reading this. Um, we at the Comptroller General's Office are providing a high level um, video for you to give you the really uh, good information that gives you a good sense of what is going on with Sabitas, but um, it's going to be your responsibility to read GASB 96 and understand the nuances of it and what applies to your uh, Sabita contracts and the in, ins and outs of it so that when you set up your assets, you are setting them up correctly. So what is a definition? And we're just going to look at GASB 96. This is actually the GASB 96 statement and we just felt like it was best to go straight to the horse's mouth for this video presentation. For purposes of applying the statement, a SBITA is a contract that conveys control of the right to use another party's IT software alone or in combination with tangible capital assets as specified in the contract for a period of time in an exchange or exchange-like transaction. So a SBITA is a contract and the SBITA is for covers a period of time and a SBITA is limited to software. Um, a SBITA can be a contract that is for software alone or a SBITA can be for a contract that is um, a software contract that is embedded within another IT um, contracts for um, some sort of tangible cap capital assets. A SBITA is what a SBITA is not. It is not services. It is not IT services. It is not maintenance agreements. It is not um, educational agreements to teach you how to use software. A SBITA is very narrow in focus in that it is really only just software. Um, there is a portion of GASB 96 that talks only about what gives you SBITAs, but then there's a, a second portion of GASB 96 that talks about the ins and outs of discussing how they arrived at things. And there's a definition in there that I really do like. And it says SBITAs only grant a government the right to use a vendor's IT assets for a limited period specified in a SBITA contract and do not allow a government to own or use a vendor's IT assets indefinitely. So I think that's a little bit simpler uh, explanation than the first one, um, but because it's in the um, supporting documentation, it's not as official as in the initial, doc initial document. But um, it, it is true, it only um, applies to the, the vendor's IT assets. So this is software that's been produced by an outside vendor and it, it requires the government to um, be under contract to use the uh, outside vendor's software and the software must have an expiration date on it. Um, and if you notice where it says the assets uh, cannot, the software asset can't be indefinite. Um, we'll circle back on that in a second. Um, GASB 96 really wanted to be very specific and focused and only limited to software. And right here, 
they even make a specific point of saying that they're limiting the scope of the project to submit us only rather than all IT arrangements. So there are several things that can look like a Sabita. They're sort of chameleons, but are not. And, um, but I've highlighted two things that I think are most applicable to us. Um, I'm gonna start at D because I think this is pretty, um, this is, is most um, applicable. And this is licensing arrangements that provide a perpetual license. And I, I alluded to this earlier where I said it's indefinite, it's not indefinite. And this is software that you load on your computer and it stays around forever. And that's not a Sabetta. So your Excel that you've had on your computer since 2010 with the formulas that just don't update, um, that is not a Sabetta. That's, that's a perpetual license. Um, the, now, if you look up at column A, in the just a few minutes ago, when, when I gave you the initial definition of Sabita, I talked about how Sabita could be embedded in a contract that had to tangible assets. Here, it this, this section A right here, it's talking about how um, that, while that is true, if the contract is majority related to tangible capital assets and software is only a tiny portion of it. So for example, if you get a computer with operating software or a smart, smart copier that is connected to an IT system um, and the, the majority of the cost is related to the um, lease itself and not to the software, then the Sabita really isn't, um, the juice isn't worth the squeeze essentially. So um, you kind of have to really pay attention to your contract and the component, the software component portion of the contract, whether or not you're going to split split the baby in, in essence. Um, and also look at B and C as well, but those are just a, just a little more nuanced. So you've established that your, let's just say that you've established that your software contract is a Sabita. Now you need to establish the timeline of your Sabita. Just like in GASB 87, which I referenced before, that Sabitas um, really work, the accounting treatment of Sabitas is just like GASB 87. Um, GASB 87 went, operated under the assumption that if it is 12 months or less, if the contract term, the maximum contract term, including um, renewals um, and options to extend is 12 months or less, then um, it is, a short term, and you got to pay attention to this this 12 months or or, or um, less because right here it says um, with the option to terminate, and so this is if either one party or the other can terminate without permission, then that is what determines the contract length. Um, so if it's short term or not determines whether or not it's a bit of 12. So if it's 12 months or less, it's not a Sabita. If it's more than 12 months, it's a Sabita. So now that you've established you have a Sabita, you have to measure, you have to create your asset and you have to create your liability. And it's just, Sabitas are essentially GASB 87 uh, part two. Um, with GASB 87, what they did is they looked at leases and they created the accounting treatment for leases. And with Sabitas, they went back and they said, essentially, we want to add an, an additional class of to this accounting treatment that we did with GASB 87 for software agreements. And um, but software agreements have um, a very unique uh, payment structure that um, is just very common in software agreements where they are often paid by the number of seats. So this whole sticky wicket in coming up with your um, capitalization of the Sabita is this concept of variable payments. And you have to determine in your variable payments what is a fixed variable payment versus what is a non-fixed variable payment. And GASB 96 directly addresses this. 
right here. And you can see, I'm just going to read it. It says variable payments other than those that depend on an index rate, such as variable payments based on future performance of a government usage of the underlying IT assets or number of seats should not be included in the measurement of the subscription liability. So back to this concept of seats. Um, to understand um, a fixed versus non-fixed variable payment, whatever you are contractually bound to pay is what you need to build into the capitalization of your asset. Um, so regardless of um, your increasing seats or decreasing seats, if that, if that can change from month to month and um, you're not going to be penalized by contract for it, um, then that would be a variable non-fixed cost and that cost would be put into your contingent expense. Um, if you have a variable cost that is fixed in substance, that means you know based on the contract what that cost is going to be as it increases throughout the years, then you can build that into your capitalization. Then you would put that in your lease calculator throughout the year. You would build that into your lease calculator um, and you would capitalize it. Additionally, when calculating your capitalization cost on your um, payments, make sure you build in your tax cost. When we went back through with GASB 87, we found that some agencies had not built in their taxes in the um, original capitalization cost and had to go back and um, redo their lease calculators. <clears throat> so um, please make sure when you set up the capitalization of your Sabitas to build in the taxes when, um, so that we don't have to go back and do that. Another section that I'd um, like to just talk about that we hinted at earlier, and this is contracts with multiple components. And specifically with um, software, you're going to find a lot in your software agreements where um, you're going to have a lot of equipment agreements with components of software. So you'll buy um, some equipment and they will come with software. And you'll need to look at these contracts and make sure that you are carving out the equipment portion separate from the software portion. And if you read GASB 96 closely, it, it does have some judgment involved as to how much of the equipment is um, material to the contract and how much of the software is material to the contract. So if the equipment cost is just the, the vast majority of the contract and the software is really just a tiny, tiny portion just incidental to the contract, then really you can just go ahead and consider the contract, um, the, the, um, the lease really more as an equipment contract. Um, but if it's if you if there is a portion of it that you really could not say it, that it's material, then you would need to look at that asset and have um, split that asset into two sections so that one would be um, would fall under GASB 87, so it would be like a computer equipment asset or or something like that, and then another portion would be a Sabita. Um, and then lastly, uh, just want to make sure it is very clear that uh, assets for GASB 96 will not be set up prior to July 1st of 2022. This, if this is done, it will mess up the capital assets. All assets need to be created after July 1st. However, we do need to have the assets, um, the implementation files ready prior to July 1st so that we can review them and have them ready to go and then we'll get them loaded into skis after July 1st. So that just needs to be clear with um, with your age, with the agencies. So um, we have done in this video and in our guide, our written guide, just a high level of GASB 96. 
your accounting staff and your IT staff will need to go through GASB 96 and we provided a link in our guide to GASB 96 because there are a lot of situations that are unique to um, software that will that may apply to your agency or may apply to the contracts that you have at your agency that you'll need to look for. Uh, GASB 96 is the responsibility of your accounting staff and the finance directors at your agency to understand. The auditors will be going through uh, next year and looking through this and um, they will be expecting your agency to understand it and to have implemented it. Um, the CG's office, uh, the Act for Staff, we are very much here to help you implement this and we look forward to working with you. So please contact Catherine Kipp or James Torbert if you have any questions.